Hi there everybody, it's Jenny from Letchlade Craft Barn here, coming today to bring you a little tutorial to make paper flowers. Karen's just popped out of the room so that we're socially distanced and I'm able to take my mask uh, or visor off so that I can talk to you and hopefully you can hear me okay today. Um, so nice to see you, hope that you are all okay and that crafting is getting you through. And we're just doing a little mini make today, which you might find really useful for making pretty things around the house, all sorts of applications for these paper flowers. They're called Kusadama paper flowers. It's a form of origami. And I've just about got that right now. For ages, I kept calling it Kudasama. So um, anyway, we've invented a new name for the paper flowers. But you can see the ones around me. We've got some in the, in the uh, bottles. Karen and I did have to drink the contents of the bottles in order to make this display. Um, and we've got lots made from books and music um, and one here made from a child's annual to bring some colour to it. But they're really simple, as I say, to make and you can use them on wreaths. You can use them in a jar like this to create a everlasting bouquet. You can use them for all sorts of things. And in fact, I created my niece's bouquet a few years ago from um, books, from Harry Potter books. She was having a Harry Potter themed wedding. It was similar to this half made one I've got on the table. So there's another idea for you. Got a wedding coming up and uh, you want to don't want to use fresh flowers. You can make a paper flower bouquet. So lots of news coming out from the craft barn. We're going to be launching this range of online tutorials. Some of them will be live and you'll be able to craft along and chat with us. Some of them will be available online for you to tap into when you need. Uh, and we'll be releasing the programme about those very soon. Some of them will be free like this one. Some of them will have a charge attached because it might be a tutorial associated with a workshop that we teach. Um, but anyway, lots of content for you to access and lots of crafting throughout the year. Some of the tutorials will link in with kits that we have available in our Etsy shop. If you haven't looked at that yet, it's etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash Letchley Craft Barn. We've got fabric, we've got wool, we've got mosaic kits, we've got all sorts of things. And um, as I say, some of the ready-made kits for crafting along with the tutorials that we're going to be bringing to you. If you live locally and there's something you see in the Etsy shop that you want to buy, just drop us an email rather than placing an order. Let us know what you want. We'll set that aside for you and you can come and collect here at the craft barn so you can avoid the postage if you wish and uh, arrange with Karen to come and collect that in a socially distanced manner. So I hope that's of interest to you. Do go and have a look at what we've got online. And also keep an eye on our website, which is letchlaycraftbarn.com, where all the news about the workshops that will be coming up throughout the year will be on there. Obviously, we've had to rearrange January and February, and hopefully we're starting again mid-March. Um, but if that all has to shift again, then all the information about that will be on the website. So... Let's get down to making our Kusadama flowers. Um, I'm going to show you the process just fairly briefly today so that you can then carry on with it at another time and make your complete flower. But if you do need the printed out tutorial, then it is available as a download on our Etsy shop. So pop onto there and you can um, click and purchase that. So what we need to start with is some paper. I'm doing it from some music sheets and I'm using a fairly good size one so that you can see what I'm doing today. You can go down to quite small sizes, you see this little one here, um, and obviously you can get smaller and smaller, but it's best to start with something fairly large so that you get the idea of the technique before you start getting really fiddly. So I'm starting, I started with five sheets of this paper. Now I have, in Blue Peter fashion, as we like to say, already made up some of those so that I can show you the construction process at the end. Um, but you need to start with squares of the paper. If you've got a rectangle like that, you simply need to fold one corner across to create a square. I'm sure you all know how to do that, but just to be clear, I've folded my corner of my paper up so that it's flush along here. And then I'm going to cut or tear off this spare bit of paper at the end. It's up to you whether you cut or tear. Obviously, if you do tear your paper, you are going to see some of the rough edges on the flowers. But I actually quite like that. I've torn the pages out of the music book, but I'm cutting the ends off just so that I don't make a hash of it while I'm showing you. 
Um, I've put that piece to one side that's the bit I've cut off because actually I could make some really tiny little flowers out of that. So everything gets reused, don't throw it away. And if you're a card maker, scrapbooker, you'll use it for all sorts of bits and pieces anyway. So we start off with our square, which we've now folded into a triangle. So we're going to work with the triangle like this, which has got the open pointy bit at the top. And then I'm going to take the corners either side and I'm going to fold them up to this point here. So I'll do that on the table. And the reason I'm doing it on the table is because I'm going to use my bone folder to make sure I've got a really good crease. Now, if you haven't used one of these before, it's great for getting things nice and flat, nice, fine creases. And that's quite important in this make because if you don't get a good fold and make it quite accurate, your flowers will be a bit wonky and your petals will be different sizes and it won't look quite as good as it can do. So I'm using my bone folder and I'm just smoothing down, smoothing along that crease uh, just to make sure it's nice and flat. So I've folded my first corner up and I'm going to do the same on the other side. So I'm taking it up to that point, using my bone folder to flatten it. There we go, that's my two sides folded up and you'll see it's formed a square again. Or bit we've got the fold in the middle. So we're going to keep it this way up with that open bit at the top. And the next thing we're going to do is squash the corners open. Now I'm just going to do one on the table and then I'll lift it up and show you. So I'm lifting up one of those corners and I'm actually popping my finger in to sort of round it out and I'm squashing that open. Now this will make more sense in a minute and I'll also show you why I'm turning it over. So I, what I did was I had my triangle, I opened it up and I squashed it flat so that it squidges out. So you need to get your finger in to flatten it out. And if you look on this other one, so I've done it already on this one on both sides, but if I turn it round, you can see I've drawn a line along the crease on the back. And that's just to show you that if you turn it over and line up your creases on each bit, you get a nice square fold. So you kind of want the crease along here to line up with the crease along there. That will make more sense when you do it, I promise. I'm going to do the same on the other side. I've squashed one side. I'm lifting up that flap popping my finger in to squish it out, making it a little bit rounded, and then I am squashing it down. So I'm giving it a gentle squash and I'm turning it over to line up that crease along the paper with the crease up the middle of that piece so that it's nice and square. Okay, so my piece looks like this. So it looks a bit like a trefoil. You've got the two flaps at the front. The next thing I'm going to do is turn these top bits down. So again, I'll do it on the table because I want to use my bone folder. And I'm turning down those top little triangles. You see there? So that it's flush with the top, so that we've got a, a flush line all along the top. And I'll do that again on the other side. Using my bone folder to make it nice and flat. And I'm also just going over those other creases I just did on the flaps. So both those top triangles are now folded over. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is fold these side pieces in half and they should go fairly easily because you've already got a crease down the centre of them. So you're simply going to fold that over, give it a squish. If you haven't got a bone folder, just use the back of a table knife, something nice and flat. Anything you can put a bit of pressure on that makes it nice and flat and sharp. Just doing the same on the other side. Again, it just more or less naturally folds in. And don't worry if, like mine, it's a bit baggy in the middle. It's just where I'm sort of doing it backwards and showing you, but you might be able to see it's just bagging out a little bit. Don't worry, once you bend it round into a petal, it will be fine. So we've come back to a square again. It looked like that. So you've got both your flaps either side and they are folded in. So the next thing we're going to do is stick that together. Now you can use a bit of glue, you can use anything you like. We favour this double-sided tape, which is from the works. It's actually one of the cheapest tapes on the market, but it's terrible. 
And for something lightweight like this, where it's not under a lot of pressure, it's so quick and easy because you haven't got to take scissors, you haven't got to chop it. You can just tear it off with your finger, pop it on and job done. So I've put the tape, hopefully you can see that, just on one side of that shape. So again, we're keeping that open bit at the top. We've always got the closed bit at the bottom. Pop the tape on there. I'm going to get the back off, hopefully fairly easily. This is always the hardest part, isn't it? Getting the tape off the back. Getting the backing off the tape, rather. If you do have trouble, just run along it firmly with your nail. And that should come off, she says. Of course, it's not going to do it for me today. There we go. So I've now got my sticky on this side and I'm going to curve that petal round so that it meets either side. So I'm bringing that together down the edge, squeezing where I've got my sticky and then I'm just going to squidge it so that it backs out a bit so it's nice and round. And that is your petal. And you can use as many petals as you like in your flower. It depends. Most of these are made with five. Some of them we've done with eight. Depends on how big you want to go, how fat you want them to be. Just have a play. It's a really good way to um, get used to making them is to experiment lots of different styles. So I've got four of those already prepared. I'm just going to quickly make this last one where we'd part prepped it. Karen and I just sat and made some petals so that... It's uh, a bit quicker for you and you're not sitting watching me make five petals. And then I will show you how to join them. Really simple. Again, you'll need some tape, you'll need some glue. When we do this um, in the barn, we tend to do the final construction with a glue gun um, just on the end bit because we put them on a stalk. I'll talk about that in the middle in a minute. So you can use a glue gun if you want to. Obviously, that's a lot more sturdy than using the tape, but we haven't had any issues with using the tape, so whatever you've got. Okay, so I've now got my five petals, and I'm going to use the tape again, and I'm going to put one piece of tape right along the edge of each side of those petals. And you'll see why we want it along the edge. It's because we want it to hold together in the middle. We don't want, if you put it further back, when you pull it all round together, it would be um, gappy in the middle and it wouldn't sit together right. So I'm just holding on to my petal. I don't really want to squash that down on the table because I want to keep it nice and round to get my flower shape. So I've peeled the backing off and I'm putting my next petal to it and I'm going to line them up so that they are sticking together along that edge where I've put the tape. Now when you put them together just try and achieve a nice flat finish here at the top. If they're slightly different lengths at the end which mine are a tiny bit don't worry too much about what's happening there because you could always put some florist tape around it or some ribbon or something to hide it if it's a bit scruffy but try and get a nice flat finish here so that you can then add an embellishment in the centre which I'll come on to in a sec. So another bit of tape I'm just going to very quickly construct my flower. So I'm just going to keep going round and adding that bit of tape, lining it up very carefully in the centre so that I get a nice even finish. And if you've got more petals than this, if you're doing sort of eight petals or more, it's best to make two batches, if you're doing eight petals for example, make two batches of four up and then join them together and they'll just um, it'd be a bit easier than trying to keep sticking one on top of the other on top of the other. Um, and then you just you just bring the two lots of four together. Nice and simple. So again, I'm lining it up. And get a little pinch in the middle. If you squish your petal, just pop the finger in. Round it out again. A couple more bits. So I'm just going to stick my last petal on there. Now if I was adding a stalk, um, this is the point at which I would do that. So before you bring it all together, um, we would get a glue gun, run some glue down the centre and we've used on these, we've used um, just barbecue skewers, just the uh, little wooden ones or I've used um, wire wrapped in florist tape for example on these ones on the bouquet. Um, sometimes you can stick them on anything or just not stick them on 
uh, on a store for tour, you might want to just have them in a display or you might want to glue them into, say, a paper wreath or onto a nice rattan wreath or something as a decoration. So I'm going to, in this instance, put my last bit of tape on. And obviously, if you're adding glue in the middle um, to add a stalk, just glue your last bits together with whatever you're using. You don't have to go back and use a piece of tape to do the final sticking together of the petals. Okay, again, this isn't going to, backing's not going to come off for me. Oh, I don't know. There we go. I've got my last bit of tape on and I'm just bringing that together, giving it a little pinch in the middle so it stays together. And there you have it, you have your Cousidon flower. And I think they look absolutely great. And if you want to add an embellishment like a button or a bead or whatever, you just pop some glue in the middle and, um, and stick it on and you've got an instant Brilliant decoration, so simple, and you can make it out of something in the house. You don't need loads of materials for this. It might be an old magazine. It could be those annoying flyers that come through the door, all sorts of things, but a really nice little make. Good one to do with the kids. You'll have great fun with it. So I hope that's been a handy tutorial for you. I hope that we'll see you again very soon. We'll let you know as soon as we have the new tutorials released. We'll give you plenty of notice so that if it ties in with a kit, you've got time to order it if you want to. And we'll give you a list of materials. So if you want to make along with what you've got at home, you can do. Anyway, that's me signing off for now. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you soon. Bye.